it is uh, a great pleasure to, uh, to see so many people here to welcome you to uh, this first uh, international conference on uh, contemporary esotericism. Uh, nice that so many actually made it here uh, despite the fact that uh, local uh, university police uh, last night uh, decided to take down all of our signs. Uh, but you made it to, uh, to the right place and that's, uh, that's very good. Um, <coughs> Now the interest in this conference has been uh, really quite huge uh, over uh, our expectations and uh, we're very pleased with that. Uh, so the result is that we can uh, look forward to a number, a great number of interesting papers uh, besides uh, four exciting keynote lectures and uh, a roundtable discussion on Wednesday which we think will be very, very interesting as well. Uh, we'll take the, uh, the um, opportunity at this point to uh, give some uh, general uh, information and then uh, also a little bit about conference. Before that, to introduce ourselves, uh, I am Egil Asprem uh, of the University of Amsterdam. I'm Kenneth Grahmer from Stockholm University. Welcome from my part as well. Now the, the conference is um, first of all a premature launch, launching party for the uh, forthcoming edited volume Contemporary Esotericism published by Equinox Press. Publication has been <coughs> slightly delayed, uh, we're afraid, and uh, it will now be expected to, to appear in January 2013. Uh, but we do have some bound copies of the galley proofs, uh, which can be uh, we uh, had a look at uh, out in the, uh, by the registration table as well. Um, in uh, addition to launching this uh, volume on contemporary esotericism, uh, we are also launching a scholarly network uh, at this meeting uh, called the Contemporary Esotericism Research Network, or simply CONTERN for short. Um, this network is affiliated with the European Society for the Study of Western Esotericism, the uh, ESSWE. Um, and uh, we plan to, to have more um, activities in uh, collaboration with the SWE in the future. You can find more information on all of this, both on the, the, the book and the network, and how to get involved uh, in the uh, Book of Abstracts, uh, towards the end of the Book of Abstracts, which should you, you should find in your conference bag when you get it, uh, those who haven't gotten it yet. Now, both of these initiatives are connected to the fact that there, there exists a striking gap in scholarship in the field of Western esotericism. Very little research exists on contemporary phenomena. Sociologists of new religious movements have debated New Age spiritualities for decades, and also in recent years, pagan studies has emerged as its own religious studies subfield. Meanwhile, we see that scholars working in the field of esotericism have, uh, but with a few notable exceptions, neglected such uh, developments. Uh, this neglect is largely due to the strong historiographic emphasis in previous research on Western esotericism. Although the professionalization of the field has largely come about within religious studies, major scholarly impulses have come from historians of ideas, historians of science, historians of art, uh, typically specializing in the Renaissance and early modern European culture. Expertise in the field has clustered then around these lines of historical inquiry, uh, with the most influential definitions and the limitations of the field following suit with the interest of the central researchers. In addition, <clears throat> despite uh, an often stated embrace of interdisciplinarity, an overall reluctance to incorporate social scientific approaches has characterized the field. This has certainly had some repercussions. Um, a fundamental challenge for the study of the esoteric in the present day is that it is not sufficient to simply transpose theories, uh, definitions, and methodologies developed for the study of, for example, Renaissance magic, uh, in order to analyze contemporary magical practices. So in short, studying contemporary phenomena poses both new problems and intriguing possibilities. The challenge to incorporate social scientific theories and methodologies being a central one. It would seem that for a proper study of contemporary esotericism to succeed, several theoretical and methodological concerns need to be addressed. Hopefully this conference will be a platform for doing so. Uh, this neglect again is uh, of the contemporary is clearly visible in one of the recent introductions to the field, Nicholas Goodrick Clark's The Western Esoteric Traditions. This book contains a chapter entitled Ritual Magic from 1850 to the present. Interestingly though, the present seems to end in the 1950s. So <clears throat> the neglect of contemporary phenomena can partially be attributed to the fact that most researchers in the field identify as uh, historians and often regard the present as standing somehow outside of their area of interest and expertise. This, of course, is a limited view of history, which, after all, is constantly being uh, created. The realm of the historian thus includes the present and the recent past. Another related reason <clears throat> for this neglect can be sought in the uh, methodological familiarity and sort of comfort zone of uh, the strict historian. Uh, while historical material may appear somehow frozen in time, 
and thus ordered and easier to subject to meticulous scrutiny, uh, tracing lineages, historical relations, and so forth. Contemporary material will seem uh, chaotic and uh, ever-changing, uh, and, cons uh, and consequently much more difficult to catch. An investigation of such material can be frustrating and easily appear unorganized and unscientific. It seems clear that historical studies from the field of Western esotericism must be combined with scholarship from studies of new religions, pagan studies, and so forth, if uh, a more comprehensive picture is sought. In order to succeed, bridges must be constructed uh, to overcome the incongruities in method, theory, and approaches that exist between the different segments of complementary strands of scholarship. The incongruities partly depend on differing disciplinary rationales, with most studies of phenomena contemporary phenomena that could be labeled esoteric, being sociologically or sometimes anthropologically informed. Uh, the dislike of social science, uh, scientific approaches in the study of esotericism was already noted. Uh, this aversion seems connected to similar biases in the history of religion, uh, which followed uh, the influence of Mirza Eliad. Eliad and the phenomenal school of history of religions uh, associated with him, tended to oppose sociology due to what was perceived as the reductionist uh, influence of sociology. Uh, in short, sociology was claimed to present the religious as not forming a phenomena sui generis, uh, but instead being an expression of broader social forces. Uh, in religious studies at large, this fear of reductionism has, uh, was heavily discussed, uh, heavily criticized uh, more than 20 years ago. And despite the occasional local outbreak, aversions of this kind now seem rather dated. In current scholarship on esotericism, however, this ghost of Eliade, I call it, may still be felt. As for example, when Nicholas Goodrich Clark again dismisses definitions of the esoteric in terms of discourse, social constructions, and legitimacy because they lack, quote, uh, a hermetic interpretation of spirit and spirituality as an independent ontological reality. That is, uh, they are refusing to describe it as something irreducible, indeed as an, quoting again, an autonomous and essential aspect of the relationship between the mind and the cosmos. <clears throat> there seems to be a fear that uh, dealing with sociological issues will in some way diminish or infringe on the value of the subject. As many of the influences uh, of uh, Eliad have been purged from the study of religion generally, uh, such as the problematic ahistorical approach to history, this simplistic paranoia about sociological reductionism should also be discarded. Involving sociological perspectives and looking at the role played by social factors in the formation of the esoteric does not need to mean that one reduces one's subject to these particular social factors. <clears throat> this is not to say, of course, that uh, sociological approaches to the esoteric uh, and the occult have always been unproblematic. Uh, indeed, still also uh, problems uh, remain with, uh, with uh, sociological studies of uh, the occult, for example. However, we stress that the uh, historiographic study of the esoteric could still benefit from sociological perspectives, just as sociological studies need to be informed by the conceptual frameworks and historical awareness developed by historical research. One aspect of the historiographic study of historicism, which becomes increasingly problematic when we move to contemporary expressions, uh, is the predominant focus on elite representatives. Uh, in a fair run approach, the esoteric form of thought is primarily expressed in the intellectual philosophies and theologies of men like Ficino, Pico, Paracelsus, Bruno, uh, and so on, whereas more lowbrow uh, folk expressions are typically neglected. This also involves the elevation of originally more popular material to high culture when the need arises. Uh, the fictional origins of Rosicrucianism might already indicate this uh, tension. Part of this might be due to fewer traces of lowbrow culture having survived in historical records, but the overall ethos uh, nevertheless introduces major problems when examining contemporary esotericism. Pamphlets of New Age spirituality will undoubtedly compare unfavorably to the <coughs> philosophy of Ficino, and online message board uh, discussions between contemporary Satanists uh, will be less impressive than an arcane letter correspondence between alchemists in the early modern Republic of Letters. This does not, however, automatically imply that such materials are any less important for academic research, and scholars should in any case avoid such biases. The elite bias becomes particularly problematic 
when recognizing that contemporary esotericism is intimately and increasingly connected with popular culture uh, and the emergence of new media. So, uh, summing up, the agenda of this conference uh, is um, twofold. First of all, to emphasize, uh, emphasize the need uh, of expanding the field of Western esotericism to encompass contemporary issues. And second, and in so doing, uh, to integrate the study of esotericism firmly with approaches and perspectives from the study of religion more broadly, and especially from the social sciences, uh, including anthropology and, and sociology. Uh, not only do we believe that such integration is imperative in order to sufficiently explore contemporary esotericism, but it also seems desirable in order to avoid that uh, the field falls into professional isolation on a whole. Avoiding that fate and instead in, uh, in, uh, inviting a constructive and integrative dialogue between esotericism research and other disciplines has the promise of benefiting all parties, we hold. And it is our hope that this conference will contribute to such a development.